Right, here I am, God of Gold again, and I am here to address something that uh, someone has been asking me about, and I'm sure many of you were probably asking the same way, but you just never commented on it, but it's okay. Today, I'm going to try to cut straight to the punch, and I'm going to explain as much of this in detail. Now... When it comes to making a mod for Hoi4, there is the folder, and there's a .mod folder, which is a text document. For example, say if I create a new folder, that's how the mod will be stored. The mod contents will be stored in that folder. When that's done, usually people will say, I don't know, my mod dot mod now if you are to ever mod in hoi4 and you create your own mod folder there are a couple of things you're going to need one you're going to need notepad plus plus or something similar to it like uh, sublime text for example anything that works uh, with it it usually does but if you use something like uh, notepad which sometimes works but not always this one is more precise and accurate to the point where you can figure out which words go to each line. And you can even compare text too. Uh, that's mainly a plugin. Um, I'm afraid you guys would have to look that up. But uh, if I show it to you, like for example, if you go in here, like um, you put whatever stuff in here. Like you put the mod path, the name, supported version, the mod version, picture if it has one. And I also would like to mention that if you upload this to the Steam Workshop, you get an ID. It's a long number. You, you'll be able to see it. But um, here's the thing though, is that there are certain, there's a certain size you need if you need like a thumbnail. When it comes to making a thumbnail, you need to have, uh, let me try and find some decent example here, but basically, look at the Kaiserreich, for example. This is the raw mod file that I found, and it takes a bit to load because there's a lot of stuff in here. Now, you see where it says mod hoi4? This is the documents tab. You click documents. Paradox Interactive, Hearts of Iron 4, Mod, and your mod, and then this is all the contents inside. So like if you if you have content in this folder, in this new folder, throw it not in here, not in your mod folder, throw it in the mod folder. It's another subfolder. I know it can sound confusing to some of you, but basically that's the best way how to install a mod. Right here, this is the whole, these are all the mods. And along with them, dot mod files. Now this is where you see all of other content. This is where the path is. These are where the tags are. That's the version, supported version. The version is, is the mod version. The supported version is something you gotta worry about because without that, it won't launch properly. Now, I think I pretty much explained how to do that part, but how it mainly depends on what mod you're trying to make. Like for example, you can actually create your own mod in, there's a tool in here, mod tools. You can create a mod, mod like right here, all installed mods, this is the launcher, mod tools, create mod you can name this anything you want and the version this is the version of your mod like uh, I previously showed you for example this I'm creating a mod called a new world order and contention as a side project it basically will feature new stuff like uh, events balance alternate his well it's not really alternate history but it changes the map so much it seems like it it's a tag for Hoi4, 
modding. It is often used by a lot of modders like myself. So if you, depending on what you mod, you can put tags. The tags won't affect it, but if you want to make the mod when you upload it more professional, you got to do something like that. Uh, of course, you can manually add it. Nothing will happen. Again, this is not this does not affect coding in any way, shape, or form. However, stuff like this does. Thumbnail can be affected too, but it has to be on the right path. So, uh, name, um, that's the name of the mod, how it will come up. Like, for example, you see all these here. That's how the name will come up. Um, but here you can create any mod you want. You can call it anything. If you want to edit the map, you can edit the map. If you do fixes, like to the mechanics, events, or coding, you can do that too. But gameplay also can tie into it. Again, it all depends on what mod you want to make. So, I'm, frankly, I'm not going to demonstrate that here because it, I mean, it, it is straightforward, but if you guys are really, really having trouble, I will try to feature a link in the description below um, to maybe further help you out with modding installation manually because you subscribe on the workshop that's different you click subscribe that's it you got it but you don't have the raw files they only give you a specific set not like uh they don't give you dot mod well actually no they give you dot mod but they don't give you what is supposed to come your way for example the kaiserreich folder they don't give you that all you get is this weird long named word like letters and numbers named file it's it has basically it's the id of the steam workshop item if that makes sense now okay here's the thing another issue i would like to address before i end the video or maybe i'll i'll do further um one more actually I'll see what happens. So basically, another issue someone can face is that a mod doesn't always show up despite dropping it into the mod folder. Like for example, you take these two folders of your mod. This has your content in it, and that has the other stuff, like the destinations of where it needs to go. That's the dot .mod, that's important, because that tells the game the mod is there. If you drop them in here and everything is correct, sometimes, this does not always happen, but I have encountered this issue, it does not show up here. It doesn't even show up in add more mods. Nowhere here. So I didn't put it in as a demonstration, but it makes sense because if you don't have the correct paths and stuff that can mess up that's one thing but sometimes that's not always enough in rare cases you could end up having a mod file that's clutter so how do you fix this well as i previously mentioned earlier you go to all installed mods mod tools create mod now you can name it after it like for example this is a descriptor. Don't worry about this descriptor. It's basically just a copy inside the folder of the .mod folder. So it is a .mod file, but it kind of it makes it works with the Steam Workshop upload. It's complicated. I may get into that part deeper another time, but that's how it works. It's just another mod file. Um, that it yes it can hold IDs and paths of where to go you can even do replace paths I highly recommend before you use these look these up and use these with caution because I have had crash issues before using them now say if you have all the coding in here you put like the mod path the picture version supported version the name anything you need whatsoever goes into that dot mod file up there 
I know it's blank right now, but it, just hear me out. So once everything is in there, you drag it in, doesn't work. Here's what you do. You create a new mod, you name it, you base it off the version you have. For example, say if your mod is this version, uh, 1.16 or 1.01, 1. 1. whatever, X, X, I, I don't know. So whatever version you have, just put it in, and the original name of your mod, put that in too. Now, the mod directory is something that's important, as I previously stated. Without the mod directory, it's impossible. The mod won't launch without this. As you can see, this is the directory. This is the path right here. So for example, you called it my mod, you would have to type my mod. But sometimes, uh, yes, you can leave spaces, but the safest way, I think, to avoid issues is to underscore it. So like for example, if you want to put my mod in basic text like this, you could do it like this as an example. Or if you really want to, you can do this, but you have to make sure the directory matches because if it doesn't, it won't launch. Now, once you've done all the tags and everything else, you can create the mod and whatever content you have in your old folder, here's what you do. For, say for example, you create a new mod file in this mod folder and you have the content in this folder. For, so here's how it works. Whenever you create a new mod folder and a dot mod file, right here, it automatically sends it to the mod documents folder under Hearts of Iron 4 and Paradox Interactive. It's empty, but you'll see a descriptor mod in there. You can, again, it's just like this. It's barely different. It's only inside the folder. That's pretty much the main difference. Also, descriptors don't have to have paths, but it is optional for a more secure connection. But either way, it'll work, so don't worry about that. As long as the main dot mod file is with the folder here, it'll work. For example, this is your mod file, this is your dot mod file. If it has content, drag it in. If it doesn't work, if it doesn't show up, create your mod. Make sure your directory matches, your tags are all set, of course. Once you create the mod, it'll give you an empty folder. Now, once it gives you an empty folder, whatever you have in this, like common, localization, anything. And uh, just for example, back to Kaiserreich again. This is inside the folder. This is the content. So if you have stuff like this in here, drag it to the new folder. Do not go for the other mods because that will overwrite them and that will mess things up and you would have to reinstall them. Unless if you back them up, of course. Um, it. I know it sounds complicated. Uh, I hope I explained as much as I could here. I know it's tricky to mod. I get it. Even I was struggling at first. I'm. I feel everyone's pain. But this is really how to mod. And I forgot to mention, if you do this correctly, you transfer the content in here into the new folder you made using this launcher. You exit out and click Hearts of Iron 4 again. It'll launch it again. And then it should show up. Now, if, it, if there's still an error, sometimes you'll see a red exclamation where it says, oh, your mod is outdated that also is an easy fix for example again going back to the mod file make sure your path is set that's that's very important and the supported version this is how the game supports it so right now it's currently 1.10 but it's probably going to be 1.11 soon when the next update comes but that's basically how it works this is important this is important 
the name is pretty important, but the coding comes first. Picture, that's optional. But that's only if you want to make it look more professional on the workshop, for example. Uh, it has to be a certain size. I'll maybe leave a link in the description for that, too. Um, so I guess that pretty much wraps it up. But remember, these simple things here. Make sure your path is down. Make sure your supported version is of your game. How do you find that out? Well, I mean, it's pretty easy. All you got to do is find it on your launcher, or you can find it uh, based on how your mods are. There's, there's so many opportunities, and there's so many ways you can execute this, but if... If you guys are having any more trouble, I hope I explained as much as I can. I know my last video didn't go as in-depth with it, but um, I hope this helped a lot. And if you guys are still having problems, um, just, you know, just do a little research. Uh, I, I'll have links for you in the description. Hopefully that'll help. But, um... Yeah, that's pretty much it. So I hope this video helps, and I hope your mod is one day seen on the workshop if you do so. <laughs> All right, take care.